I'm Ed Amoroso from Tag Cyber, and I'm sitting here with my old friend, Scott Gordon, who's the Chief Marketing Officer for Pulse Secure. Welcome, Scott. Thank you. Great to be here. It is very nice to see you. Now, Pulse Secure. Yes. It's an old new company, right? It's been That's around right. a while. Tell us about Pulse Secure. So if you flash back to the mm -hmm. Juniper Genos days, uh, essentially uh, we have 14 years of, uh, of Juniper history with us, mm -hmm. legacy, if you will. Uh, some some serious networking knowledge, but back then, uh, about four years ago, Juniper spun off uh, two of its division: the mm -hmm. uh, VPN SSL VPN and also the Network Access Control divisions. Mm -hmm. And that was the formation through private equity of Pulse Secure. And since then, we've been building out the technology, uh, acquisitions, uh, moving to cloud, and uh, that's where we are today. Yeah, nice to have that that networking expertise and legacy, right? That's kind of rare to have a company essentially jettisoned with all that capability, right? And IP. That's right. That's right. So well over 200 patents. Yeah. And uh, it's interesting to be a, you know, a four year old plus company and yet have 80% <laughs> of the fortune 500 and over 20,000 uh, happy customers. So uh, yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's not your typical. It's far from your typical startup. The the two hundred patents is amazing, right? There's probably not too many, if if any, cybersecurity companies that come to mind with that kind of an IP base. That's a, that's incredible. That's right, and and we we're certainly building on top of that. Yeah, yeah. Now let's talk um, sort of cloud. So we were chatting before right. this idea of connecting to cloud. That's one of the basic primitives in cybersecurity, in, in computing. Forget about security, but some computing. You guys are in that business. Tell, tell me a little bit about how it happens yeah. securely versus um, maybe the way some people do it today. Yeah, we're, we're squarely in the business. So a lot mm. of folks definitely look at SSL VPN as you know, a connection from outside to the, to the network. Mm. Uh, and certainly we have a, a strong customer base and a very proven product there. Yeah. Uh, but what we're seeing the big trend is really migration to hybrid cloud or multi-cloud. So mm. now, uh, if you're a CISO, a CIO, CTO, you're looking at how can I optimize my IT resources and how can I bring out applications and infrastructure that may not be solely on my network. It may be in a private cloud, it may be in a public cloud, it may be a SaaS application, mm. and more likely, it's a combination of all those things. And how can I do two things? One, make it really seamless for that end user to just access wherever and however they need to do it. They don't really care where it exists, uh, but how do we ensure that they access it seamlessly while appropriately? And then how also do we optimize IT resources so that they don't have to worry or think, okay, how do I change that authorization and authentication aspect uh, when someone's using a different device or is in a different location, or is going to an asset or a resource that may not be fully under our management mm. to some degree, and so that's what that's what Pulse Secure is really all about. And there's a very intimate relationship with mobility, right? When you say access, you're talking not just you know the conventional access, but mobile, which I think is the way it not only happens today, but pretty soon that'd be the only way, right? Yeah, yeah, um, certainly. Uh, mobile workforce yeah, uh, yeah. is coming in tons of flavors, yeah. uh, a variety of different devices. And so IT has to consider, okay, do I need certain capabilities and will they be so unique per device, per user, per application scenario? Uh, or, and then how do I orchestrate a policy for that to make it uniform, compliant, audible? Uh, and that's what we've built out. So. We really enable a way for customers to decide, okay, I'm virtualizing my infrastructure. Mm -hmm. How can I get that same secure access technology from a physical appliance to a virtual appliance? Now that appliance is going to a private cloud, uh, now those applications need to go to a public cloud. How can I orchestrate single sign-on and, and authentication with device compliance assurance? Mm all through one system, all centrally managed. Yeah. And that's where folks are taking it. Whether they start small and they're a small to medium enterprise and they're, they're starting in the cloud, or whether they're a very mature global enterprise with uh, hundreds of thousands of users uh, that need to get access 
but do so in a way that's uh, secure and preserves privacy and has resiliency. Interesting. You know, in my mind, I'm thinking architecturally. It's kind of simple, right? Endpoints, gateways, and management systems. You would think. That more, but, uh, <laughs> how, how do you guys, um, like, what, what are some of the big the building blocks? Yeah, so, yeah. so, like so some of the challenges is some of the assumptions that, uh, you know, as soon as I go into, um, go into a, uh, a private cloud, uh, that everything that I have for access controls, or as soon as I introduce a new device, mm. or I have a new type of uh, application, uh, that I can make this all work under the same management infrastructure yeah. that I had before. Yeah. And depending on how flexible that platform is, uh, it could be a real challenge. So do you want to yeah. have one-off implementations? Then how do you make sure you have like policies? How do you make sure the uh, processes are seamless so that when you onboard, not just a new user and device, but even so, a new application? Right. Uh, how do you do that in a way that doesn't really make a lot of silos in IT and optimizes your your resources there mm -hmm. and then again if i'm an end user i don't want to think or know about it i just want to do it because if if i don't get seamless access that's when you have shadow it and you have a lot of circumvention of policy you guys go back and forth between premise and cloud like the virtual number is it is yeah that, i mean hybrid i guess that's what it means yeah right? yeah so you we, have to have do you have do you need separate products for that or do you kind of um, integrate it all together actually with our system you can you can build it out particular to what you need today, yeah. knowing that you can scale out to the future or you can buy everything all at once. So mm -hmm. uh, in fact, we have suites. Suites right now are our best selling uh, solution set. Uh, so that's anywhere from providing a, a local uh, SSL VPN, a virtual environment, physical and virtual, mm -hmm. and even to the cloud. So now uh, if you take a step further and think about single sign-on, we essentially can federate that single sign-on. So we can enable multiple means of authentication. Let's say some company wants to use uh, Facebook or Google, for example, mm -hmm. or another company wants to use their standard, a standard two-factor authentication. Right, right. Uh, we can enable that not only from the, the device and the source, but also going to the destination. So they want to go to Salesforce for one application, Office 365 for another application, maybe some custom applications that are in, a, in their standard network, uh, they can do so. And they don't have to worry about, okay, what device exists or where does that application exist? They can all configure that very seamlessly in a, in a unified policy. Interesting. Tell me where you think NAC is going in the next couple of years. Some people have, sure. have said it's you know dead. Some people say with mobility and virtual, it'll have a revitalization. Where, where, where that's do you right. guys kind of stand on that? Now that's a, that's a great question. So so uh, our, our NAC business is booming right mm. now, um, and so you know the old school NAC was pretty basic. It was okay. How do I authenticate users and their devices yeah. based on device configuration to specific network resources? Yeah. So it was it was a matter of on and off. Um, in some cases, it was disruptive. Uh, NAC's come a long way. It's really a way more mature and interoperable um, mm -hmm. solution. In fact, it's a tremendous adoption rate. It's in the growth. It's in the growth and adoption curve right now, mm -hmm. uh, and, it, and it should be being its well well over 13 year old technology. Sure. Um, but what's happened now is it's really being implemented uh, as a visibility tool. Uh, give me dynamic visibility of any endpoint pre-connect and post-connect uh, in my environment. Uh, and then let me apply policies to understand those devices and take actions. And some of those actions could literally be reporting or some of those actions could be segregating them to a particular network infrastructure. Yeah. Quarantine. That's right, quarantine stuff. Or let me enable them to be fixed. What's really interesting with network access control now is an enhancement of interoperability. Mm. Uh, so visibility is key for the enterprise. If you can't see systems and users and you don't have that intelligence, then you have gaps for your policy. And then if you don't have a flexible policy engine, then you can't use that intelligence. Yeah. So what we're seeing is a lot of interoperability where um, right now the buzz is security automation. So how can you take that intelligence and visibility that a network access control solution have and share that 
with other security and networking infrastructure? And conversely, how can you allow security infrastructure that may not have enforcement capabilities? Uh, certainly they can raise alerts, uh, but how can you actually take action with some of the security infrastructure that couldn't take action? Um, and so we spent a lot of time making our solution uh, vendor agnostic. So we work with the, the popular uh, switches, Cisco, Cisco, HP, and Juniper for mm. sure. Uh, popular firewalls, Palo Alto Networks, Checkpoint, uh, Juniper, and Fortinet. In fact, to give you an idea of interoperability um, with Fortinet firewalls, for example, and we do these with others as well, um, Fortinet can, can identify a device but it may not have a lot of user intelligence. And so we can actually send user and device profile intelligence to Fortinet's security fabric. Mm. And this is through their Fortinet Authenticator. Right, right, their right. Fortinet Authenticator can then forward that information and share it with all the firewalls, with all the FortiGate firewalls. So now the FortiGate firewalls now have their policy engine enriched with our identity capabilities. Conversely, for, when you do that, Fortinet can say, okay, it's at the perimeter. So it can say, okay, this is a, 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 um, a device that's been taken over, or it's a, a malicious device that's exfiltrating data. Let me block it mm. from going out. And let me block it from receiving command and control information. Super important, but it's operating at the perimeter level. So through our technology, we're able to take command instructions from Juniper, from, I'm sorry, from the 48 firewall mm -hmm. to actually tell us, hey, isolate this device wow, because it's malicious. very powerful. Yeah, and, and, and also if, if, if the 48 firewall says, hey, we know this is a malicious IP address, it's a threat, same thing, it can send us mm -hmm. this information and we can take an isolation uh, action. So this is all trying to get things more dynamic. The reality is most people with core integration, and when I say most people, I meant most organizations, really use interoperability for switch, firewall, maybe their enterprise mobile management system, and certainly their SIM. Mm -hmm. Because SIMs are taking a much more active <coughs> quarterback role uh, in the security infrastructure, and they're getting involved with automation. You're right. So if you have those four key, key areas covered with your NAC, then you really have a rich environment to, uh, to interoperate and take uh, automated response to threats. So Scott, tell me a little bit about application delivery control, how that works, it virtualized, maybe relationship to things like load balancing. Yeah, great. So, so certainly uh, application delivery uh, controller market um, is, load balance, is load right. balancing, right? right There's right, a huge right. install base uh, on physical devices, That's physical, the legacy, the legacy, right. the right. physical devices that are that are that are delivering under SLA, which mm. is great. Uh, but where that's really going to is virtual. So if mm. I have a virtual infrastructure, whether it's my network or or a private cloud, uh, now I want to be able to really on demand scale out and control based on policy and based on uh, infrastructure and based on demand how I want to deliver. And that gets along with that secure access. Mm. So if you think about emergencies, you know, in emergency situations, and certainly in New York and Boston, we've had some storms here, right. some snowstorms. So right. how do I, for both natural disasters and man-made man -made attacks, how do I ensure that unfettered delivery uh, to my end users when they need to get that information the most? But what, what's really interesting and why we're building, we have all these building blocks together uh, is something called uh, a technology and a category that's growing, which is uh, the software defined perimeter. Mm -hmm. And that's really getting to user and device delivery, uh, you know, at, right to the application. And that's where we see ultimately the market heading. Uh, slowly but surely, people are still just migrating to public and private clouds. Um, but we want to make sure that our, uh, our user base can have that confidence that that same platform that's proven that they've enjoyed and they use and it's integral mm -hmm. part of their processes and their delivery mechanism will extend to even the newer technologies like software defined perimeter. Sounds like you're having some fun in this job. It's, it's a fun job. It's, you know, the, you have, a, you have uh, some really good innovative technology uh, at a nice sizable uh, market and we're seeing uh, we're seeing some decent growth. 
know, 80% of the Fortune 500, a couple hundred patents, big tech team and base. Yeah. Those are all pretty exciting. It is. And we've, we are continually innovating on that product line. So it's not just, um, again, network access control, the big buzzword now is mm -hmm. IoT security. Yeah. So smart IoT devices in networks, whether it's uh, industrial networks or, or commercial networks, uh, we're taking a good role in yeah. that. That's a nice business for yeah, you guys. Yeah, NAC is yeah. a foundational control for that. Um, but where we see other things going is how do we automate uh, the delivery of, of applications and the secure access of, to those applications. And so we acquired, this was back in June uh, of last year, we acquired uh, Brocade's yeah. uh, virtual uh, application delivery controller uh, portfolio. That's been folded into the loop. So now- Virtualized. That's right, yeah. virtualized, virtualized environment and cloud. Yeah. So that runs in, uh, in Google, uh, yeah. Microsoft and Amazon. Uh, our systems, even our SSL VPN systems are cloud oriented as well. So now if I'm an enterprise, I can take advantage and optimize the delivery based on the user, the device, where they are, mm -hmm. what application they're going to. I can provide service level delivery. I can get resiliency of the cloud. And this all ties together, ultimately, where we see this going, is a very automated, easy way for an enterprise to establish uh, secure connections, whether it's, whether it's uh, devices, uh, things, users, applications, and services uh, in a unified way, mm. but in a way that they can build up to it so they don't have to eat all at once. That's excellent. Well, listen, keep doing this good work and keep us nice and safe and secure as we connect the cloud, as we connect the apps, it's all good stuff. Keep doing it, please. It's, it's all good. Thank you for uh, sharing. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for coming. Thank you. And we'll see you next time.